name's Margot Pierce. I'm 18 and I'm a senior at Lake Forest High School. And we're here today for your project to talk about strings. Um, I'm a violinist, so that's probably why you asked to speak with me. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of String Insider. Today, we're going to be talking with high school senior Margot Pierce about her experiences with the violin. What is so cool about the word strings to you? Um, I, I don't know. I think um, one of my friends um, who was in orchestra with me put it best once when she said that it's pretty cool that you can make all that sound and all that emotion with just a piece of wood and some, some strings. So I think that's one of the things that's really cool about string instruments is that it's, it's very simple, but it's very complex at the same time. So you're a violinist? Mm hmm So when did you start playing violin, and why violin? Um, well, so I started playing violin when I was in second grade. Um, there was a program at the elementary school where you learned to play strings for, uh, you, you learned to play violin for, I think, a trimester, which was eight weeks, nine weeks, something like that. Um, and that was kind of my first foray into playing the violin. Um, and then I didn't play for a year. And then in fourth grade, I decided, um, I don't know really why we decided that I would take up the violin again, but I think mom and dad wanted me to do something maybe. And so um, it seemed natural to go back to violin because I already kind of had a foundation. Margot went about five years without playing in an orchestra setting as they didn't have one in our middle school or our elementary schools. So the first opportunity she had to play in an ensemble was in high school, but yet she kept practicing and playing and getting better and better. I was terrified um, of performing in a recital setting, in a solo setting, um, so I didn't play for anyone really except for my teacher and practicing at home, and so I think it's hard to have some sort of motivation to practice, um, and I wasn't always motivated to practice. I think it's kind of actually um, incredible looking back that I stuck with it for five years not playing in a group because I just had it was me and the music and if I wanted to take out the violin that was up to me to do it and and make myself do it and I remember having like breakdowns about not wanting to practice yeah. and mom being like it's just take it out and do it for 10 or 15 minutes and that was I, it was hard and I think I realized at a point that even if it seemed like I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to get it out and practice, once I did and I started playing, then it was fine. But mm -hmm. it was it was the getting it out and, and doing it and just putting up the time to do it, I think, was the hardest part for me. Yeah. As a high schooler, one of Margot's mentors and favorite teachers of all time is Mr. Robert Bassel, the orchestra director. He was her first orchestra director, as this was her first time playing in a string ensemble, and he has helped shape her as a performer and a musician during her time at Lake Forest High School. Um, he is, he's really special. Um, he makes orchestra so much fun. I mean, no matter who you are, you can be like me and be totally into it and, and very dedicated and um, a soloist and very interested in, in not just the experience, but the music. And then you can be people, I have friends who are not nearly as into it as I am, but they just love orchestra because they like to play and like to be with their friends. And he accommodates people no matter who you are, what type of musician you are. Um, and I think that's something really impressive with him is he's not elitist um, in that way. He's very accepting of, of everyone. And if you want to be in orchestra, he's, he's down. Um, and I think that's uh, pretty cool about him. He's... Uh, He's kind of crazy sometimes. He, he does say things sometimes that he doesn't remember, and then I'll be like, you said that. And he'll be like, I did. <laughs> it like makes no sense. Um, what else about Basil? He's, um, he, he just wants us to have fun. I think that's his really, um, his goal, is to make it that people enjoy orchestra. He doesn't want to drive people away. He wants it not to be stressful for anyone. He just wants it to be somewhere where people can find music and appreciate it and um, and not have to worry about any of, you know, like being, um, having pressure to, to be an orchestra and 
to perform and that kind of thing. Um, he, he does a really nice job of, of letting us know that he doesn't expect us to be perfect and he's okay with that and that that's normal and, and I think that's really good about him. That makes him a really good educator and it makes him, I think, I think it makes orchestra a lot more um, accepting and accessible for people is his attitude. I know there are people for sure that are only in orchestra because of him. You are doing school on Google Meet. Right. And everything, almost everything, about 99% of what you do, besides the f extracurriculars, is online. Yeah. So how has orchestra changed by being virtual? And how, how has Basil's teaching style changed? Margot explained to us that virtual learning is a lot of sectional time. So she gets to work with all the violins, um, and they work one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Basil to work on parts that they eventually record individually to put together uh, into virtual performance videos. Other times, he gives them time to work on other work um, and is also very respectful of their time, knowing that a lot of the stuff they're doing right now is stressful because it's virtual. So he doesn't add to the stress. He tries to take a lot of the stress away. Obviously, I miss orchestra a lot. It's one of the worst parts of this is not being able to play. Um, but I think he's he's trying to make it the best that it, he can for us. And he um, he's he put all he puts out these surveys periodically, like once a month. He'll like send it. He'll he'll instead of having us do something for the day, he'll be like take this survey on one of our thirty minute days. And he'll, it'll be like, first question is always, how are you doing? And he always wants to make sure that we're okay. And then he'll ask us, you know, have like a list of some of the things that we've done recently in class. Like, do you like this? And like, have us rank it. And then do you have any ideas of things that you'd like to do in class? And then last one, anything else I can do for you? And that's it. And I think it's really nice that he does that. And as we always ask on the show, we asked Margot to impart any wisdom she may have for current students who are hoping to become teachers. Don't take yourself too seriously. I think um, it's, it's very admirable to have a high caliber music program. And I think it's, it's important for, for certain students. But I think it's also important that music doesn't become something that's inaccessible for people because if you place the bar too high you're gonna lose people and I think that's something um, that has been good for people at our school is that I mean obviously our pool is so small too because the school is very small but um, it being accessible for people and being accepting of people of any playing level and any level of education has made it a lot easier for people but I think making music Together, that's the important part, the important thing to focus on. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of String Insider. Be sure to catch us next time for another episode of a great interview with a string player. Until then, happy practicing.